see the way the soil is falling off the roots there. It's just the kind of the friability of that soil is kind of really what you're looking for. And obviously the roots will tell you an awful lot. Like since we've become organic farmers, I, I'm, I, I suppose I'm now be, beginning to be a believer because it can be done. It started in 2008 and converted then in 2010. When you talk to conventional farmers, they can't bear to see a weed like what we're looking at there. That would annoy an awful lot of farmers. How could you put up with that? But if you look at the crop, it's, it's generally pretty clean. I think it was Dan Clavin saying um, long hair and sandals was the idea of organic farmers. And I, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, that is, that is there, but there's a whole lot more thought goes into what's going on in the farm. If the establishment is poor, um, you know, we can't recover through chemicals or pesticides or herbicides. So these are your natural predators, so they're eating the bad guys. The ladybirds eat the green fly and the aphids. I remember a few years ago and everybody was out spraying their beans because there was aphids on it. Now I had aphids on the beans but I couldn't spray them. And about three weeks later they just disappeared. And they never affected the crop. Maybe it was the fact that there was ladybirds in the fields and maybe other pests to the, to the aphid. A lot of tillage farms have no earthworms. But we now have earthworms on the farm. Like since 2008, there's been no chemical sprays or fertilizers on this farm. That's what organic farming is probably about to, to be honest with you. Well, we were down in um, Tipperary and uh, an elderly farmer, a real nice man, and we were just walking back in, we were going in to have a cup of tea, and we were out um, himself and his grandchild, little girl, and uh, he was checking the wheat. He was after spraying it off with Roundup because there was green weeds in it and he'd sprayed it off and here he was just cutting and he was just seeing yeah that's hard enough and he saw her doing the same thing and she put the wheat in, and he slapped it out of her hand yeah. don't put that in your mouth it's sprayed we round up two weeks ago and he just said uh, kind of a eureka moment when we're sowing seed we put in maybe 10 15 percent now then i said the seeding rates would be higher so you know you will have birds out on on the crops picking up but if you put in 10 percent more there's enough there for them you know we did fire a few shots at them as well just but the, crow, the crows are too cute the crows are too cute the minute they see you driving out they were gone sort of thing you know then this is not a great shot anyways oh, <laughs> Yeah, I always find that when I go to an organic or a biodynamic farm, you can hear the birds singing more. And I don't know whether it's in my head or what it is, but there definitely is more wildlife in an organic farm. I would certainly say in the last 12 years, the amount of wildlife that we have on the farm, it's incredible. Like, you know, pheasants, uh, we have partridge running around, rabbits. You live with nature, you know, and as I said, Dennis is out video on foxes in the front field there at the moment. And it's lovely to see it, you know. We now realise, and it was only this year, we had one particular field up there and it was completely yellow with dandelions. It's the only flower that's kind of out in the countryside and that's the one for the bees. Do you find then in springtime the heavier clays can just cap up? That's what the disc's for and we kind of we have a kind of a heavy time cultivator now as well, with very, very big heavy legs that actually it lifts the soil rather than just turning over with the disc. So you want as much air in the soil as possible and uh, you know, it's hard to get that right every year. Every year is different, you know. And your cover crops will be helping, like, planting different root structures, roots, let's say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All that residue helps over the years, and there's probably been seven or eight years of residue in some of these fields, so the ploughman can really see a difference in it, you know. Anything you take out, you have to put it back in. My wife always says that, oh, no matter what's wanted for the farm, it's got, if I want something for the house, it's a, <laughs> a struggle. And beat the old trees, a couple of hundred years old. This was an old estate farm years ago, and I think the old house was actually down this far, but it's gone now. That's prospect organic barley, that now. And that headland tends to be wet, so that was treated about two weeks ago. So we've closed the gate on that crop now, and the next time we'll be in that field will be harvest time, which is hopefully 15th of August or thereabouts. These are our best fields up around this area, and then further down the the farm is the peaty land. You know, barley will grow well in the mall, but obviously the heavier peaty soils they tend to be later. We're kind of in a limestone area here, so all, all, all our soils will be awful high in calcium. Heavy clay is fine certain times of the year, but other times coming off, say, a wet winter, it, it's a struggle to work with. This field would be slightly different. Be, the bottom of this field would be actually getting onto dark soil, and then you have a heavy clay up there, and then the landing gardens is very sandy. You know, and uh, with some lovely barley now in lay in, in Garens. 
when you're ploughing organic fields now, that's the depth, four inches, that's what you should be ploughing, because all the nutrients are in the, the top three to four inches. Even the smell of the soil is quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I find it hard to describe the actual smell. I'm going to continue experimenting with, with these types of things. Uh, I know a da would be a little bit more reserved on things, but you want to push it as far as you can. As you I'm, can I'm a conventional organic farmer. Well, you'd be more traditional in ways, but like, uh, look, as more conventional stage farmers go into the organics, you know, we might all start learning off each other and we can push it along even further. Was it a hesitant retirement? I don't know, I'm not delighted to be finished. <laughs> a lot of my friends are still in there playing and you have an attachment to them lads, so plenty more time to spend on the farm and take orders. So. <laughs> Would you think he'd take orders from I me? Don't think so, no, no. I don't think so Well, the fact yeah. you're not a county player anymore, we'll have to he try some whiskey. He, sto he stopped taking <laughs> orders when he was that height. <laughs> so this was the first organic bottle released and you're one of six farms in this. I think uh, the smells of whiskey is it's often as nice as the taste, I think. It's lovely smells. You could certainly get a hint of oak as well. Yeah, the you vanilla know. kind of coming out. Yeah. After a few pints of Guinness now or Smithix to polish it off, that's, that's a lovely whiskey. Or maybe just whiskey on its own. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a lightweight when it comes to drink. He didn't get yeah, his father's jeans. I'm, I'm, I'm not a good drinker at all. Now I know a guy and he'll go in and have his three pints and he'll have a nice whiskey and he'll just sip that and that's the real way to drink whiskey. And we'd normally go to the local pub, myself and two friends. We go nearly every Sunday evening for a few pints. There could be 25 <laughs> lads along the counter and it's a little small pub bar and like the owner would be great, he'd be into whiskey. So he was 70 during the lockdown. I'm, I'm going to give him a bottle of water just because he was 70. And I said, I have something special for you. And the fact that Dennis and Pat Booth are on it as well, it's going to be nice for him just to have it. And it's a talking point. Thank you.